Well, the Palestinian issue, I think, is at the heart of the whole geopolitical situation that's going on now, and also at the heart of the way that we're being manipulated. And, and the reason for that is that after the Cold War was over, the uh, elites needed a new enemy, and Arabs and Muslims became the new enemy. And they, they fit the bill perfectly because of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, which has already led to the demonization of Arabs and Muslims by those who are very strongly connected with one side in that conflict, and that would, that's namely very strongly Zionist, nationalist Jewish Americans, uh, and many of uh, the people who control the media in the U.S. are from this group. And there are those who say, you're not supposed to talk about this because they'll say that you're a bigot. Well, I don't think it's bigotry to simply state the facts about this. If uh, more than half of the key decision-making positions in the U.S. media were occupied by, let us say, um, uh, Arab uh, Muslims from Saudi Arabia uh, who are fanatical partisans of some uh, nationalist project, let's say that they were, they were members of a, of a party, you know, building, wants to build an Islamic state, I can't imagine that it would be off limits to mention the fact that our media is, is more than 50% run by uh, Arab Muslims. So why can't we talk about the fact that today it is a fact that our media is more than 50% dominated by Jewish Americans who have a very fierce loyalty to the state of Israel and to the Zionist project. And because this is the case, this has created a situation in which uh, Islam and, uh, and Arabs can be the new enemy because the media loves it. The media will not report honestly on this new clash of civilizations because the media is controlled by people who are fanatical uh, partisans in this conflict and therefore fanatical enemies of, uh, of Islam and of Arabs. So how can, we, uh, how can we address this positively? I think we need to, to speak frankly about it uh, without prejudice. Uh, and we have to call on all people of goodwill, including Jewish Americans and uh, Jews around the world, many of whom uh, are very aware of what's going on and who don't approve of it, uh, and, and uh, a lot, help people understand that the information they're getting is not honest information. It's biased information. It's tendentious. It's favoring one side. And this has allowed those who are fabricating this clash of civilizations to, to get away literally with murder, uh, to get away with overthrowing the Nuremberg precedent and bringing back wars of aggression, to overthrow the decolonization precedent set around 1960 and to try to recolonize the world. Uh, all, all of this is happening because of the propaganda apparatus is set up in such a way as to be uh, very uh, willing and able to target Arabs and Muslims. And the reason for that, again, is the Arab-Israeli Arab conflict or the Palestinian-Israeli conflict uh, is, is at the heart of all this. We've got uh, people who care so much about this project running our media, and, and we need to talk about it and change it. Well, even before 9-11, I was outraged by the scurrilous uh, slanders against Arabs and Muslims that are part of the everyday fare that Americans get from their media. Uh, Hollywood has long specialized in swarthy Arab villains, uh, maybe posing a sexual threat to white womanhood. It's actually kind of ironic that Hollywood has been casting Arabs and Muslims in the role that Jews were cast in uh, for many years by anti-Semites. And there's one really good example of this, which is the film uh, Aladdin, the first Disney film made under the, uh, Michael Eisner's reign. And in Aladdin, there's a character who's the, the villain, is the hook-nosed vizier. And this guy is a perfect uh, caricature of the stereotype of the evil Jew from anti-Semitic tropes. And in particular, uh, what Eisner's people did was they borrowed the most famous uh, anti-Semitic, that is anti-Jewish, stereotype uh, from Hollywood history, which was the Walt Disney film, The Three Little Pigs, presented the big bad wolf as a tall, hook-nosed Jewish peddler coming to the door of the poor little pigs and terrorizing them. Well, in Eisner's film, uh, Aladdin, this same character has been recast as an Arab Muslim, the evil, dark, hook-nosed vizier uh, who is the villain in the film Aladdin. 
And this shows us how very consciously uh, Zionist Jewish Americans, uh, not all of them, but a very small number of very wealthy and powerful ones uh, in charge of Hollywood and the media, such as Michael Eisner, have chosen to take anti-Semitism, the same uh, prejudice that they have suffered from, their people have suffered from for so many years, and consciously turn it against Arabs and Muslims, and turn Arabs and Muslims into what in their minds would be the, the new Jews. Uh, and I, I was aware of all this before 9-11, but 9-11 took it to a whole new level, and, and that's what, what got me involved. What do you think the American, regular American, or the uninformed American perceives Islam and separately perceives Palestinians and Israelis? Well, due to this uh, biased media coverage, Americans see a lot of suicide bombings. You know, every time a Palestinian uh, commits an act of violence, it's likely to make the front pages. And the vastly more numerous acts of violence from the Zionist side are generally not reported on. And for that reason, the average American has gotten the impression that Palestinians are a bunch of terrorists and they're all Muslims. You know, Americans equate the Palestinians with, as all Muslims, when in fact there are plenty of Christians and, and there are even Palestinian Jews and, and Palestinians who are not religious, who are struggling to defend their land. But what, all we see is this violence. Uh, and it gets blamed uh, increasingly on the religion of Islam. Uh, we're told that the reason that Palestinians are always running around blowing up innocent people is because they believe that they will get a bunch of virgins in paradise if they do this. Uh, and so that's the, this kind of comic book stereotype that's being shoved down the throats of the American people by the Zionist-dominated media. And of course the facts of the case are completely the opposite. The, for instance, British Medical Journal did a study showing that in a period of just a couple of years of the Intifada, there had been more than 600 Palestinian children murdered by sniper fire by Israeli soldiers in cases that it was clearly you know, shoot to kill, uh, and these children were presenting no threat whatsoever. In the majority of cases, they were simply playing on the sidewalks in the schoolyards and so on. And this fact that it is de facto Israeli policy to shoot to kill children is so far from the mainstream consciousness in the U.S. that it's you even bringing it up uh, shocks people and they can't believe that it could be true even though British Medical Journal has proven it. Uh, and again this all goes back to that uh, distortion coming out of the mainstream media which is run largely and dominated by fanatical Zionists.